Good morning. Happy Saturday. The uh, the Vancouver Canucks have signed Elias Pettersson to an eight-year contract extension when panic was seemingly uh, coming to a head as uh, the Canucks started to falter in the standings a little bit. And uh, people were like, oh, Elias Pettersson isn't going to sign here. We're going to have to trade him. Something's going to happen. Even though Elias Pettersson has said all year long that he doesn't want to think about his contract. Well, the Canucks made him think about his contract. We'll get to that near the end of this video. We'll go into how he almost apparently got traded to the Carolina Hurricanes out of nowhere, which no one expected. Um, let's go through Elias Pettersson and is this deal worth it? Uh, at the beginning of the season, um, you know, I, I, we did some contract projections uh, projections on Canucks After Dark. Um, by the way, I'm bringing this to you like almost two hours after this happened, because why on earth are you announcing a contract extension at 7.19 a.m. on a Saturday? Uh, I was asleep. Um, projections that we did, we, we were thinking it would be like he could be a $100 million contract player, right? We, we were thinking it could, it could genuinely be an eight year extension at 12 and a half million dollars. Gives it a round nice $100 million. Uh, the Canucks said, no, sir, you're getting 11.6, which is still a, a boatload of money. And this is us dollars too. So like, uh, overall it, it's a ton of money, but the cap's going to be going up fairly soon. Um, and Elias Pettersson is a, is a superstar hockey player. Um, and he's worth $11.6 million. Let's go into the old hockey DB and we'll start here. We'll get into some more analytical uh, perspective as well. Um, I mean, the numbers say a lot for themselves, right? Career point per game player, right? 398 points in 387 career games uh, was stuck around the 60 Six, 68 point mark remember that first year 66 points second year 66 points gets uh the covid shortened year uh and then comes back and has that bit of a slump in 2021 2022 where he puts up 68 points and that was a bad season in general last year though 102 points after starting out pretty slow 39 goals this year he is on essentially the same pace 75 points in 62 games 29 of those being goals and, and there's a lot of people who complain online on social media as people do and and you need to get off social media um, that, you know, he doesn't show up in big games or uh, he like scores in bunches where he'll get like four points, one game and zero points. The next that's, that's how most good hockey players perform, right? Uh, guys seem to score in bunches. Not everyone's scoring, you know, one goal, every game uh, that if you're going to get 80 goals in a season, or if you're going to get 40 goals in a season, it's not every other game you're scoring a goal. Sometimes you're going to score two or three or four in a game. Um, but either way, let's move on. Uh, Cap Friendly has the breakdown of this contract. Uh, this doesn't really matter to us. Um, the only way this would really matter would be like in a in a buyout case. Um, but he's getting a ton of money in signing bonuses. Um, you know, twelve million in signing bonus this year, ten million next year, and then there's a bunch of fives. Uh, so it's it's a good uh, like half of the contract or so is in signing bonuses, which doesn't matter for us. Again, it's really just for uh, you know the contracts front loaded, um, which would matter in a buyout case. But if the Canucks are ever buying out Elias Pettersson, something has gone terribly wrong. Um, percentage of cap wise is a tweet from Grady, um, 13.89% for reference. Connor McDavid is 16.7%. Austin Matthews extension will be 15.87%. Nathan McKinnon is 15.27%. And Nylander is 13.77%. I think he got 11.5 and Pedersen got 11.6. Um, and there was a bunch of rumors uh, again last week on what these contract numbers might look like, whether it was going to be $12 million. Some people were saying 12 and a half. Some people were saying Nylander money. I think that might have been Dreger that said Nylander money and, and good on you, Darren Dreger, if that was you, because uh, you nailed it. Um, so percentage of cap wise, I mean, he's up there with these players, right? He is he's the number one center. He's the star of a hockey team um, like a Nathan McKinnon is um, like an Austin Matthews is. He's not the goal scorer Matthews is or, or the player that Connor McDavid is, um, but he's you know, more valuable than the Nylander, most likely. Um, so it, it's a pretty good contract. Um, Donnie and Dolly put out a quote or put out a poll this morning. Uh, how do you feel about Elias Pettersson's eight year contract worth 11.6 million per year? 93% give it a thumbs up. And that's a very arbitrary. Do you like it or not like it? But it, get 93% of people to agree on anything. Good luck. Right. Um, so overall people are happy, especially cause I think we were conditioned to expect 12, 12 and a half million, um, analytically. Let's go into Jay Fresh and Dom's tweets. We'll start with Jay Fresh because he has the nice, uh, all the nice numbers, all the nice percentiles. Uh, let's start in the top right corner. This war percentile rank, just flat out at the top of the NHL. 
Uh, offense versus defense versus finishing. His defensive game has been way worse. Last year seems to have been an outlier. Um, but finishing, he's one of the best in the league. Uh, offensively, he's one of the best in the league as well. And that puts him overall in the 98th percentile of players, um, which is good. And I think that I think that might get higher as he gets older because um, he's, I mean, he's a hell of a hockey player. Um, on to Dom's tweet because I, li- I like Dom's tweet because he gets an actual projection. Um, so this is his pace, I guess, for this year's 37 goals, 55 assists for 91 points. Um, zero defensive rating, which is better than like the 50th percentile. It sort of lines up with the 54 that Jay Fresh has here. But that offensive rating at plus 14, um, I think that's worth like 14 wins or something. I don't know the exact numbers. What I do know the numbers on is this curve is the uh, projected value of uh, Elias Pettersson. They project next year he's going to be worth $11 million, so the Canucks will be taking a slight hit technically on the cap based on the value he provides. But the rest of that contract, based on an age curve, he's going to be performing above that $11.6 million average, which is impressive for a star player, right? You know, these caliber of players are guys that, Sometimes you have to overpay a little bit because you you just can't let them go, right? You're never going to win a trade in which you're trading a star player for the most part. Um, So to get him under the projected value, it averages out to $11.9 million per year of value. uh, Well, he'll be getting paid 11.6. So not a big savings on the cap or anything, but this management group continues to make, you know, these just these good moves, these good small little savings here and there, here and there. They all add up Um, because if you have, 10 guys on your roster that you're saving maybe, you know, $300,000 then maybe expected on their cap hit. That's a $3 million player that you can now insert into the lineup um, or pay for most of Ilya Mikheyev, who hasn't been performing. Sorry for the random shot. Um, quotes. Uh, Alvin says, very important signing, yada, yada, yada. We look forward to, you know, his best days are ahead of him. Uh, another example of our ownership's unwavering commitment to do whatever it takes to help us be a success- successful organization. Thanks for throwing that one in there, Francesco. I'm sure uh, you had a, a say in that. Uh, very exciting day for me and my family, says Pedersen. Very happy to be continuing my career as a member of the Canucks. Um, it's all, it's pretty boilerplate stuff. Um, however, the, the real fun part of this is when... Uh, Elliot Friedman really sparked this whole thing two days ago, right? So last week on Hockey Day in Canada, he brings up that there's like some stress about Pedersen's contract extension. um, And that's what sort of, you know, caused everyone to panic a little bit. And then on a, you know, on on Thursday night at 6 p.m., Friedman just drops a tweet and it just says on Elias Pedersen or something along those lines with a link to this article. Uh, Canucks and Pedersen resume negotiations after trade talks with Hurricanes. Like, this just got dropped out of nowhere. Um, here, here's the quote. According to multiple sources, the Vancouver Canucks and Carolina Hurricanes had a, a discussions about Elias Pettersson that advanced to a stage where the Canucks and the player needed to make serious decisions about where their relationship was headed. Canucks ultimately decided in favor of another attempt at extending Pettersson, and he, facing the possibility Vancouver could move him, allowed agents Pat Brisson and J.P. Barry to resume negotiations. Previously, the talented forward indicated he preferred to wait until after the season. And then, of course, the rest is that he hasn't, uh, doesn't have an extension yet, but now he does. This is so interesting to me because what it looks like is um, Pedersen said, no, I want to wait till the end of the season. And Canucks management are probably thinking, well, we just have to sign you to a one-year QO and then you can leave if we wait till the end of the season. We want to get this locked in now. Um, and they're also thinking, we have no cap certainty. Right. Going into next year, going into the offseason, like this is your biggest domino. Elias Pettersson's contract is the most important thing that they have to do. And if you don't know if you're going to be paying him 11 million, 12 million, 13 million dollars a year, how are you supposed to build the rest of the team? If you don't even know if he's going to sign long term, how are you going to then shape your team around that if you don't know what your best player, like if he's going to be on your team in two years time? So. It looks to me like they just held his feet to the fire. They went and worked out most of a trade with Carolina and went to Elias Patterson and said, hey, we're talking about your contract. Otherwise, we're just going to ship you to Carolina. We have a trade in place and it's just a move that we can make. That is so baller of Rutherford and Alvin. Um, and to do that and then to still sign him for $11.6 million a year, get the full eight years um, the Canucks have their best player, their superstar player locked up for the next eight years, his whole prime, his whole prime. He will be with the Vancouver Canucks. Um, and that is beautiful. It is a beautiful day, uh, to wake up, 
Uh, it's raining, but the Canucks have Elias Pettersson signed long term. It's fantastic. Folks, give me your thoughts on the contract down in the comments below. Make sure you hit like, hit subscribe, do all that good stuff. Uh, you can find me Monday nights, Canucks After Dark on YouTube or on your favorite podcast platform. Otherwise, enjoy your Saturday.